Hey, I was going everyone just back in with another um, lesson. I was just reading through uh, Matthew and then I came across uh, the sequence of the end times again. And then I thought I would touch on that and then also salvation and um, reincarnation and, uh, you know, just uh, incredible stuff. I feel like every time I go through the Bible, I just keep learning something new. And I think that that's an amazing aspect of the book that that would literally happen, you know, for forever. And then ultimately, um, that's what salvation is all about is to continue that learning nonstop. But I wanna start with Zephaniah 3, um, 17. And uh, this is in line with the one of the verses that I quote all the time, Jeremiah 31, 8. And so I want people to know, um, you know, God's character is unchanging. You know, he's going to stick by these words, whether we like it or not, you know, and then the people that gather here, we rejoice, you know, because we want these things to come true. Jeremiah 31, 8, Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth. So God's elector in all nations. And with them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travailed with child, a great company shall return thither. I'll bring, and with them, the blind and the lame. Okay, remember that. Jeremiah 31, 8. And for people, numerology, 31 plus 8 is 39. Three nines, 999. Nine, nine. And if you rotate that, that's 666. So that's in the last days. And so... Again, you get this reference talking about salvation and who it involves. And so don't be confused, you know, by this. Um, certainly people that come by my channel understand what's going to happen soon. Zephaniah three seventeen, The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. And so now we're going to talk about salvation here. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Verse 18, 666. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival. This is for the kingdom so that you will no longer suffer reproach. And so these are people that the Bible describes in second Ezra's whose souls complain continually. And they're just um, anxious, you know, for the kingdom to be established on earth and Christ to be leading. Um, here's the verse that I wanted to focus on as well. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors. So God's going to bring judgment to this earth and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. And so that's who God is going to save. Okay. Um, right. It says here, those who are oppressed and then the lame and then the outcast. And so just know that, you know, and so that is a very descriptive term for who salvation is meant for. Okay. So the people that love it here or oppressing other people um, who are acquiescing with this system, salvation is not for you. You know, and if I'm doing that, it's not for me either. And so, just know that. Okay, so Zephaniah 3 reaffirms Jeremiah 31, 8, and then the entire narrative of the whole Bible of who salvation is for. So this this uh, subject now, moving on to Matthew, I just want to go into um, reincarnation and then the sequence of the end times. And so this is an amazing thing, you know, just how the, the Bible speaks um, on many levels, you know, when it um, tells us things. So I'm going to start with um, <clears throat> Matthew 16, 28. This alone is an exclusive proof of reincarnation, you know, and then there are many, um, Acts 1, 10 to 11 is another proof of reincarnation. Revelation 1, 7 is a proof of reincarnation. Um, and there's just lots, you know, and then it's, there, we'll see more here actually as well, um, alluded to in, um, Matthew 17, you know, with Elijah and John the Baptist and Moses. But this one verse, Matthew 16, 28, verily I say unto you, there be some standing here, which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. And so how else is that possible without reincarnation? And so um, he's talking about a group of people, you know, and then just know that he's, he's standing with his disciples, you know, or obviously they're part of the elect. And so um, that's uh, only possible if their souls are back here on this earth. And then these words will make sense to them. You know, they'll understand some of the quote unquote deeper things like reincarnation and um, only God can, you know, explain that to them. And he's going to do that here. Jesus is going to do that here with um, a select group of his disciples, you know, here in um, John, or sorry, Matthew 17. Okay, so first, now let's, this is layered. This is an incredible thing. So now let's think about the sequence that I, that I teach. And I was told on the first day of 2020 is that um, there's salvation. And then there's a time where the beast system is flourishing, you know, a great tribulation where the mark of the beast is now really pushed out and then, you know, Christ returns after that to destroy everybody who's taken it. And so during that time, um, 
you know, the elect are taken away at the beginning. And then in the, during that time, the mixed multitude are sifted out, you know, the rest of God's right hand side. And then the two witnesses are brought to earth when Christ returns to save his elect, <clears throat> according to Acts 1, 10 and 11. And those are two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. And so we see all that here. Okay. So first step, we have to talk about Christ returning, you know, and then, so we see that in um, Matthew 16, 28. And so, you know, just know that. And so for the numerology people as well, Matthew 16 and 28 is two times eight is 16. So you have Matthew 16, 16, 6, 6. It's for the last days. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So for those people, whoever they are, who are of God's elect, you cannot die. You will not die. And so take comfort in that. You know, for those people who think that they're in that elite group, there's nothing you can do or anybody else can do to change that at all like christ says here which shall not taste of death this is a group of people so here we have salvation okay and then this is where it's incredible the bible is using very coded language but verse uh, matthew 17 and after six days jesus taketh peter james and john what's the point of putting six days w what difference does it make it was five days ten days after six days is coded language for after you have the salvation event you're going to have a period of the 666 system flourishing you know and then this is the great tribulation and so this is an incredible piece of coded language and so um just be aware of that okay so after salvation what do we expect we should have some reference to the two witnesses moses and elijah and then we're going to see that so after six days jesus taketh peter james and john his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart and so even amongst his disciples he had a group that he was very very close to so he had different layers of people in his entourage that he was closest to and then told them certain things you know and then he tells peter that you know he'll build his church on him and all that and so um he took these three you know up because this is a very special event that's going to happen here uh 17 2 and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as light that's a very important reference because of this next verse verse 3 and behold there appeared unto them moses and elijah talking with him and then there are the two witnesses in Acts 1, 10, and 11, who are wearing white, you know, and then they're the ones that come back and tell the disciples, this event that you just saw, you're going to see the reciprocal, you know, and like it said there, you will not taste death. And so that's them again, if people can accept this now, Acts 1, 10 to 11, that's Moses and Elijah, okay? And they're, they're wearing white, you know, as a sign of purity. And so now here we have the reference to the two witnesses. So this is not an explicitly prophetic end times you know sequence or whatever but it's it's in there and it's coded language it's just amazing aspect of the bible that it speaks on many many levels and so uh then uh, answered peter and said unto jesus lord it is good for us to be here if thou wilt let us make here three tabernacles one for thee one for moses and one for um elias or elijah while he yet spake behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him. So this is a bright cloud. These are these so-called UFOs. And that's why you see more stuff about UFOs in the news right now. And so this is the, in that time, that's, you know, what's being proclaimed, you know, for this, um, this bright, bright cloud, um, in a voice, you know, saying, this is my beloved son. In the end times, it's these UFOs preaching the gospel during the time of the two witnesses. Okay. So this is consistent, even though it's not explicitly meant to talk about, you know, the sequence of the end times it's in there, you know, and this to me is just an incredible thing that that sequence is everywhere. You know, it's undeniable at this point that if the Bible is true, then that is the sequence of uh, events that are going to take place in the last days. <clears throat> and only a small group of people will be in the know, so to speak. But it's an amazing thing. Verse six, and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, arise and be not afraid. And that's in verse 17, seven. 2444 arise and be not afraid this is salvation for god's elect verse 8 and when they had lifted up their eyes they saw no man save jesus only and so moses and elijah are now gone okay and so that's the exact sequence of events for the end times is that do you have salvation the elect taken away then you have moses and elijah prophesying with these clouds you know in the sky saying you know christ is the son of god the gospel's true the bible's true and then the two witnesses are taken away and then America is destroyed, you know, in the last days. And so this follows that exact sequence, you know, and this to me is an absolutely incredible thing. Um, 
Verse 9, and as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, tell, no, tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, when they, when, why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? And Jesus answered and said to them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias has come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they, they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. And so... Um, Verse 13, then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So Christ doesn't say, dummy, he's reincarnation, okay? Like, he doesn't talk like that. He wants them to figure it out, you know? And then he knows that once he tells them that, the Most High is opening up their mind to understand, you know, what's really going on. And then at that moment, it, it clicked, you know? And then that's the way it works with us. Whenever we come across certain truths, just something clicks. And we don't always know why and what inspires it, but... Ultimately, all credit goes to God. Whatever truth that we know, God has opened up pathways in our brain, and then somebody or God himself has fed us information, then we can say now it's true. And so now they understand reincarnation. And then so they know now that um, that one of those two people that showed up, you know, talking to Christ, I'm assuming they were also wearing white, was, um, was John the Baptist, you know, and was Elijah. And so his spirit still lives, you know, and then they're there discussing things with him. And so... Um, just know that. And so that's how Christ reveals truth to them and then to us now in these days. And so this to me is an amazing thing. And um, verse 14, and when they were come to the multitude, there came a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, so now there's going to be a reference to the multitude or the mixed multitude. They're the ones that have to go through the great tribulation. And so this is an amazing thing, you know, that um, the Bible always encodes God's DNA. It's an amazing thing. Um, verse 14, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. So now we have a reference of falling into fire. And then I'm assuming, you know, we're going to have a reference to people getting burned, you know, and then this is where it's an incredible thing where, um, you know, the Bible um, does this. Verse 16, and I brought him to my, to thy disciples and they could not cure him. So there's like, even amongst his disciples, there's an elite group. You know, it's like he brought them to the other ones, but then they weren't able to do it. And then so now he's with his closest quarters, you know, and then God shows a certain group of people certain things. And so just know that. Verse 17, then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how shall how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And so this is fire and talking about a faithless, perverse generation. And it's talking about it, you know, it's foreshadowing what's going to happen in the end times. And so this... Uh, Matthew 16 and 17 foreshadows the end times completely, you know, and this to me is an absolutely incredible thing. Um, it supports, again, reincarnation. And so uh, the only thing to me that would mean that the Bible is not true or we're not in the end times if the elect are not on this earth right now. And then I have a strong suspicion that they are because these words make sense to me. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.